perhaps this is a good time to get started. So I'll say welcome everybody, uh, all the participants. Uh, this is an, it has been an interesting start to our evening. There's power outages around the town. And so uh, I, I'm sensing some people um, who maybe wanted to join us weren't able to join us tonight. So we're gonna try and figure out how to, how to get a recording of this. Uh, my name is Gordon Miller. I am um, an associate superintendent working here at the department. Um, I was a uh, school principal at uh, Christ the King School for a number of years and a vice principal and a teacher there. So I've been through this kindergarten process. Um, this evening is uh, kindergarten registration in French programs information. And I've got a, a team with me to, to support myself. And I'll just go through um, who we've got. This is, um, we have Erin Lee Fitzsimmons is, is joining us. She's um, an acting student information specialist. Uh, we have Tamara Boiteau. She's a principal of Selkirk School. Maria Paré is a bilingual uh, communications analyst. We also have David McGinnis. He's the director of uh, technology and student information. So Dave and I are the Zoom hosts and the rest are panelists. And the way this, uh, this um, session works is uh, we do have Maria who's gonna be monitoring the chat and we're, we, we welcome questions and you're gonna see there's a Q and A section uh, that you can enter your questions. And the idea is that at, we're going to collect the incoming questions and combine them. And at the end of this presentation, we're gonna have time to answer your questions. All right, so um, I'm gonna screen share and start the presentation. So thank you. This is, uh, this is um, an exciting time for parents uh, registering your child in kindergarten. And we have a number of options in, in, in Whitehorse and in Yukon. Um, and I hope tonight we'll give you an overview of, of the options that you have. Uh, and, and we'll also give you some insight into the actual process of registering your, your child for the 22-23 school year. So, Starting with the, the date, the times, though so the online registration uh, for all Whitehorse schools is gonna open on Monday, uh, February 14th, um, Valentine's Day for that matter. And we have a nine o'clock starting time. Uh, we need, we wanna have a clear uh, starting time so when we can begin this process. So the nine, 9 a.m. time is, was the, is the, the, the moment in the day that we encourage people to start doing the registrations. We're, we're asking that don't register your child before 9 a.m. So please be uh, uh, cognizant of the time because we won't be able to accept those registrations. And the site that you're gonna be able to uh, register your child is the yukon.ca. Uh, once you go to yukon.ca, there's, um, you'll find the section on closer to the bottom of the page where you can register your child. Yukon.ca for education has got lots of, uh, lots of important information um, regarding um, school calendars and bus schedules, et cetera, et cetera. So talking about registration. So uh, children are expected to attend uh, their attendance area schools. And again, if you go to yukon.ca, the attendance areas or sometimes called catchment areas. They're clarified there. Uh, attendance areas can be confirmed on the Yukon, uh, like I said, CA uh, website. Um, and uh, I recommend you to, to check that site out. There is a, there's a number of, like I said, there's a number of uh, information pieces there uh, pertinent to education in schools. Um, children attending Catholic schools will attend the school closest to their home. And so the, 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 ma the magic line is kind of uh, Two Mile Hill. I think of uh, for the Riverdale, the Riverdale for this side, for uh, south of Riverdale, 
um, is Christ the King School. And if you go north of the Two Mile Hill, um, it's the Holy Family uh, School in Porter Creek. So those are the two Catholic schools that, that children can register. Uh, but again, the, the catchment area is, is if you live on this side of Two Mile, this side, I'm, I'm on this side right now, uh, it would be Christ the King and the north end of town, it's um, Holy Family School. Parents registering for the French immersion uh, schools can choose between the two schools when registering. Uh, the two schools are uh, Whitehorse Elementary and Selkirk School as well. Um, we were supposed to have um, uh, uh, Sharon McCoubrey was going to join us. She was one of our panel persons, but she, uh, she doesn't have any power. Uh, she doesn't have access to a car for, for just, it's like the perfect storm for Sharon right now. So she can't join us, but we're very happy to have Tamara, uh, who is the principal at Selkirk School. So she'll be talking a bit later about the French programs, the immersion programs at those two schools. So the process. So this is the registration process. I'm going to turn it over uh, shortly to, uh, to Aaron Lee because Aaron Lee is, uh, is the expert in this area. But the, the four points I'd like, to, I'd like to start off by saying is that uh, parents are encouraged to set up an account in preparation to registering your child next week. So next Monday is the registration. It opens, uh, but you can actually right now open an account for your child. Uh, once parents have an account, uh, they can use this account to initi initiate the online registration the day it opens. So on the 14th, you can be ready. Once you have your account all set up, uh, the 14th at nine o'clock, you can, you can uh, complete the registration. So a couple additions this year, uh, we're asking the parents need, should be prepared to um, upload government issued ID for the children. Uh, we're not, health cards are, are not valid, but a photo of the ID is uh, acceptable. And if you're unable to upload the ID, uh, we're asking you to just contact the school and arrange a time that you can present it in person at the school. So if you're having any, any glitches uploading uh, ID, phone the school, uh, arrange a time that, that is, that is um, mutually works for, the, for the, all parties and they'll, they can take care of you at the school. Um, if parents can't fill out the form online, we're gonna ask you to, again, to contact the school and set up a time to get help with that, with that registration. And like I said, we're gonna be happy. We're gonna be answering questions at, at the end of this presentation. So I'm gonna turn it over to um, Aaron Lee. Um, again, Aaron Lee has got lots of experience with, uh, with this program. And so maybe I'll ask you just to um, speak to the slides, Aaron Lee, and, and I'll, I'll change to the next slide when you're, when you're ready. Thanks, Gord. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome, of course, to kindergarten registration. We're really excited about the new process for this year. Um, this first slide is the, the site that we go to to access both uh, registering for an account as well as for initiating a registration. So in the circle there, you'll see request an account for those who have not already done so. That's where you will go, request the account. And then it pretty much walks you through the process. And on the yukon.ca site, we have supplied a PDF that'll pretty much walk through that process with you. And of course, in the end, if you have questions or concerns, my contact information is also available. Next. So this is the initial page that you'll see when you initiate a registration for your child. The year, although there are two there, the year that we're looking at is the 2022-23 year. And my suggestion in here is just to use the next button to process or proceed throughout the process. That way you don't miss anything. If you start skipping around in it, you'll actually get a pop-up box that tells you you're missing information. It'll be sort of reddish in color. 
if you do a save and close, if you don't have, if you don't have time to finish your, your um, registration, you can do a save and close. And what it does is it just puts a pause on it and it lets it sit within your account to have it finish. You have to go all the way through next, 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 and get to submit at the end. And at the very end on the bottom next to the save and close and the next button there will be a submit button. Once you click submit, you can no longer edit any information that actually fires it on through to the school that you selected and it now belongs to them, it can no longer be edited. Okay, so this is just a, the second tab in there. Anywhere you see a red asterisk, it's a required field. I will make note in here that you'll see legal name and preferred name. For the legal name, it has to show exactly what's on the identification that you provide. Uh, example being your birth or, or the child's birth certificate passport. It has to be exactly as shown or we have to change it. Um, and then there are some fields that aren't required fields, so they don't have asterisks. Please feel free to go ahead and fill those in if they apply. Um, it just is information that will follow the student throughout their education. And you'll note on the bottom, it does indicate a home phone number. We do know that a lot of folks no longer have landlines because uh, a lot of people have moved to cell phones. The home phone is a mandatory number. So what we ask is that you put your cell phone number, if that's what you have in the home phone number, as well as the cell phone number page. This, in, this particular page though, is for the student, which wouldn't necessarily have one. So that's where you're gonna enter yours. We don't collect phone numbers for students. So even if you're a student, I know they're kindergarten, so they wouldn't have one, but in the future, if they did, we would not fill that in. It'll be your phone number. And next. That's the end of my slides, Gord. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Shane Lee. I bet there are some kindergarten students with phones, so just Could very you. well be, could very well be. Um, so kindergarten registration. So parents registering with the Catholic or their French immersion schools will receive an initial email of acceptance from the school. And so this is conditional based on further processes. Um, my experience at Christ the King School, for example, parents would then come to the school and present uh, perhaps proof of baptismal records, etc. So that's why the conditional piece uh, for the Catholic and, 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 and for French immersion as well. Uh, by the beginning of April, um, all parents will receive notification uh, via email to confirm your child's acceptance. So that's in about, uh, what's that, six, six weeks? Um, so there are still numerous steps to take um, at a school and at the Department um, of Education they need to take place before the official acceptance. Um, plus, we give the factor, and there is a two-week spring break in there as well. So we figured by the beginning, by the beginning of April, uh, sh should be um, th the time that all all parents will have be notified as to where their their child will be placed. Uh, Catholic registration will, will require additional documentation and processes, which will be communicated via email by the school. And I sort of already referred to that. That's just such as the, the baptismal records that, some, that are presented at, uh, at the school as well. So here's a new addition. Um, we have a First Nation school board this year. So that's quite exciting. So um, this logo is the logo I have up here is not the logo for the school board. This is the logo for the first uh, Yukon First Nation Education Directorate. Um, and this is their logo. And, it, and, it, and, and uh, the YFNet was uh, taxed by the Chief's Committee on Education to assist with the establishment of the board. So in other words, uh, the Yukon First Nation Education Directorate is, is, is uh, providing the support for the establishment of the school board. And so next year, the schools joining the First Nation School Board in Whitehorse will be 
uh, Gray Mountain Primary and Tikiti Elementary. Um, and I had, uh, I was lucky enough to talk with their communication person and they provided the following bullets. Registration remains the same as for other schools. So the same process that Aaron Lee just was outlining uh, is, will, is applies to all, all students um, in, 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 in Whitehorse and in the, certainly in, in the two, uh, the First Nations school board schools as well. Uh, parents and guardians can anticipate minimal changes to programming at these schools in the first year. And um, over the coming years, uh, parents can expect some exciting new programming at First Nation school, uh, schools, including on the land programming, uh, First Nation language instruction, um, alternative Indigenous assessment methods, wraparound student supports, as well as experiential education. And the First Nation School, uh, school Board schools um, will also present uh, in many new ways for parents and guardians to get involved. Example, as a trustee, uh, community, uh, community committees, and parent advisory committees. And just to clarify, the catchment area for the for these these school boards is the same catchment areas as what exists right now for Gray Mountain and for Takini School. So uh, the, the 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 catchment schools in in Riverdale, uh, you know, are, are Selkirk and uh, Christ the King and um, and the, the Gray Mountain Primary School, um, and as well. And then there's also for the Takini schools, it would be the, the catchment area schools in the Takini for, for that particular school. And again, that's all on the, uh, the yukon.ca um, uh, website. Um, now we're gonna talk about uh, kindergarten registration for early immersion. So maybe I'll start with this first page and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Tamara, if that's okay. So on this slide, the, the pieces of information that you may be interested in is 84 kindergarten French immersion places are going to be available um, this year. That's, there's 66 at uh, Whitehorse Elementary and 18 at Selkirk. Registration again opens at the same time, uh, Monday, February 14th. That's going to be at 9 a.m., so Valentine's Day. And like we wanted to have a firm firm opening time, we want to have a firm closing time. So Monday, February 28th, uh, in two weeks at 4 p.m. would be the last day to register your child for French immersion and uh, to be included in lottery. So a lottery in these schools is held in the case that more than 84 students register. So after this date, um, any early French immersion places are available on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, but at this point, the number allocated, the numbers allocated for place, places are um, 82 uh, for both Selkirk and, uh, and Wes. So I'll go to the next slide. And Tamara, I'll let you take the lead on French immersion. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, so my name is Tamara Boto. As Gord introduced me, I'm the principal of uh, Selkirk Elementary. Um, and we are a dual track school, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so kindergarten uh, early French immersion uh, means entry into the K program. Uh, if there is a lottery necessary, uh, that's gonna be held on Thursday, March 3rd. Uh, and it is uh, quite extensive. There's multiple people that are involved. Myself, uh, Sharon McCrubery, uh, Principal of West, um, Gord Miller, uh, usually we've had Ryan Sickes, our uh, assistant deputy minister, uh, there to, to make sure that everything is going kosher. Um, and as well as we usually invite uh, one of our representatives of Canadian Parents for French as well, has been there in the past. Uh, just to ensure that we double check and um, just so that you all know that it is very ethically done. Um, so the other thing just to uh, rem remind everybody about is that we do have um, limited spots. Uh, so the final day to accept your spot into the French Immersion Program is Friday, March 18th at 4 p.m. After that point, if we haven't uh, had a confirmation of your acceptance, 
If there is a wait list, then we are going to offer that spot to the next or to the first person on that wait list in the number one spot. So uh, it's just to remind you uh, that there is uh, two deadlines for that. Um, just to go over some of our entry points that I think uh, sometimes our parents forget that there are multiple entry points into uh, French immersion. Uh, kindergarten is one, it's what we call early immersion. It's offered both at Whitehorse Elementary and Selkirk. Uh, we do also have a second entry point in uh, those early years and that's grade one, uh, but it's not a guarantee that there would be room in a grade one for uh, an entry at that point. Another option uh, is grade six late immersion. That's only available at Whitehorse Elementary. And it is a great option uh, if, for example, you um, were not able to get an early uh, French immersion spot, but it's also sometimes just really reflecting on how your child currently is and if it is in their best interest for that early immersion or if it might be a better route to go late immersion. Um, and uh, the nice thing too is there's different programs at different schools. For example, Selkirk Elementary, we also have a Kind of a boosted core French program called Intensive French, which is a great leader into that uh, late immersion grade six program at Whitehorse Elementary. So a big uh, question we always ask ourselves as parents, I apologize if you can hear my dogs barking right now, <laughs> um, is, is French immersion right for my child? And I think a big thing is to kind of reflect and see, you know, uh, does your child enjoy experimenting and having, uh, accepting challenges? Uh, are they comfortable making mistakes, taking risks? Um, do you, you gotta consider if they are willing to make those mistakes and can they take uh, some correction and are able to take that in a, in a good way, in a positive way? Um, and are you able to and prepared to provide some support and encouragement to your child? There's no, it's not necessary to, for you to have to speak French, but there can be some tough periods when we're first learning a second language or if your child's on their third language, and it's really to be able to listen to them read, to show them their, uh, to share work uh, at home that they've done, either a writing piece, uh, a new book that they've learned how to read. It can also be is listening to sometimes if there are those frustrations and encouraging them that all things are difficult before they do get easy. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, and that's also why we do have different entry points into French immersion. Uh, it's to be able to have that reflection. And we never want that door to close in those early years. Uh, both Wes and Selkirk have uh, multiple different resources. Um, of course, Whitehorse Elementary is only uh, French immersion. So they do have uh, French library resources and instruction. Uh, they're, all of their staff uh, speak French and are bilingual. So that means learning assistance. Our educational assistants or paraprofessionals. Um, we do have a French monitor program. So these uh, people come in under French programs under Danielle Bonneau, and they are there to support uh, the culture, um, playing games, reusing language in different ways. They're just such a fun asset to have uh, visiting our different classrooms and French monitors are, are with us with the, for the whole year. Um, we also have French reading buddies maybe not in our COVID years, just with bubbling, um, but it is something that uh, we've done in our non-COVID years. At Selkirk, we're just a little bit different because we are a dual track school. Um, we, uh, all of our specialist teachers uh, do their very best uh, to offer French program, but it also becomes a staffing. So right now for French, uh, for the library, we don't have a French librarian. However, we do offer physical education in French uh, and our music uh, teacher, Grant Hartwick, is a quick learner and is reusing his language uh, at all opportunities. So um, it, it, he's a great asset. But those are just a couple of those differences that we'll see versus a dual track or a single track school. Uh, we do have, again, with our French monitors, as well as support from French programs at the Department of Edu Education, we do have a lot of French cultural activities that come. Uh, Sugar Shack is, I think, one that we all can think about, um, you know, At uh, both of our schools, we have uh, national anthems in three languages, uh, French, English, and Southern Toshone, because we are on the traditional land of the Kwamendan and Tahangutan 
uh, Council. Uh, our assemblies uh, do include, uh, at Selkirk, we do them uh, in multiple languages, so we'll have uh, French and English as well as Southern Toshone. Um, at West, uh, their assemblies are done solely in French. Um, we also have different extracurricular activities. Um, at West, obviously, uh, their sporting is able to all be done in French and French coaching. Selkirk, we end up doing it in English because of the, the dual track school. Um, but there's also other opportunities uh, with choir and band. Um, and it, it just depends on what's offered at that school, uh, each individual school uh, based on that year. Um, right now, both schools do and are very fortunate to offer Southern Toshone programs. So we do have our language and culture uh, teachers and that programming happening. Uh, Selkirk this year, we are still uh, posting for our Southern Toshone language and culture teacher. So we're hopeful that we'll have that built for next year. Yeah, so Wes, and hopefully I will do Sharon some justice. Uh, she has a way with words. So uh, they are a single track school, as I said. Um, all of their announcements are in French, uh, language that is used in the hallways and uh, throughout the schools in French. And all subjects are taught in French, even special classes such as uh, physical education or music are, are taught in French as well. Just keep in mind that the playground language is in English. So students, um, granted, we often hear them speak in French uh, during the, at the playground at the recess times too, uh, but uh, that is one where they're able just to speak in uh, English to their friends and their peers. Uh, so Selkirk, uh, again, dual track school. We offer both uh, French and English programming. Uh, English is the main language of the school. Um, uh, so our announcements uh, will be made in English if, uh, uh, just for our daily ones so that everybody is able to hear. Um, however, when we have our assemblies, we have all three languages uh, Southern Toshone, French, and English. Our national anthem is in three languages. Um, our music, physical education, and IT um, are taught in French, as I said, if staffing permits. So right now we're really fortunate with that we do have a physical education teacher that uh, teaches uh, solely in French with our, our French immersion students. Um, music, as I said, Grant Hartwick is, is uh, he's, he's increasing his French vocabulary and his ability. I think he's able to have most classes running all in French right now, but when, in, when introducing some new instruments, he's, he's working on those vocabulary words. So. Um, and uh, our, again, our library is, is not currently, but it's just dependent on our, our staffing as well. And our language uh, throughout the hallways, to be honest, uh, you're going to hear a mix of French and English um, throughout. And I think it's what's really nice in, in Selkirk is even students that are in the English stream uh, are practicing uh, to say hello or how are you in French to those teachers that are, they know are French immersion teachers. So. Um, it's great, and you'll hear uh, different uh, languages even out on the playground. Um, very multicultural. Uh, we do have an organization, a national organization called Canadian Parents for French, and uh, there is a Yukon chapter. Um, if it's a great way to get involved, a great way to um, drive different uh, change forward or bring um, more recognition. Um, so there is uh, contact information. Um, our current president is uh, Christina Lang. Uh, there is a teacher also that is a representative on um, CPF as well. So there is an the email address in Facebook if, if you want to learn some more or learn how you can get involved. I know in past years we've had some open seats, so a uh, great way just to, to see where French Immersion and, uh, is heading uh, within the Yukon. Do you want me to keep going, Gord? <laughs> well, I can, I can jump in. I'm so glad that you have power, Tamara. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was information I got. Uh, this is from Pascal. Uh, just, um, the, it was, um, 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 it was Michelle, Michelle Boleyn, who contacted me. She, she's the vice president of the Yukon Canadian Parents for French. And she uh, was asking if I could just, just touch on uh, the different programs. Um, this is actually in, in the territory uh, for the different French language opportunities. 
So starting with the core French, which most of you are probably familiar with, uh, Grey Mountain, Takini, Jack Holland, uh, Johnson Elementary, Farrow, Mayo, Hidden Valley, Elijah Smith, Golden Horn, and St. Elias and Haynes Junction all offer uh, core French programs in their school. Early immersion, and Tamara already touched on this, but that's offered at, um, at Selkirk and at Whitehorse Elementary School as for the kindergarten and grade one students. Late immersion, which is another option you may want to consider if you're, you find your child is more developmentally prepared at grade six, uh, Whitehorse Elementary School has that. Um, intensive French is offered um, at Selkirk, at Robert Service in, uh, in Dawson City, at Christ the King, and Holy Family School. And if you're not familiar with intensive, this program tends to be offered um, through uh, throughout the year by teaching English for the first half of the year. And then mid-year, which is around the third week of January, uh, the language of, of instruction switches to French. And sometimes it's flip-flopped. It might start, start with French and then flips over to English. Uh, but the idea is that it's a, sort of an intensive exposure to the language uh, at grade five. And it's a, a, it's a um, has been determined as the best year to, to offer that program. Um, and for more information, we have this, uh, this is uh, for yukon.ca again, you can see there's a French inscription um, slash ecole um, site that you can follow. So with that, I'm gonna stop screen sharing and we're going to have a, maybe an opportunity to answer some of the questions in the chat. Um, and I hopefully that uh, Marie has been keeping up with, uh, with the questions. And this would be an opportunity to share the questions, Maria, and, and perhaps one of our panel members, our panelists, or myself, uh, will do our best to answer the questions. Gordon. Well, uh, hi, everyone. I was just going to say, Dave, you and Aaron Lee have done such a great job answering all the questions that, uh, oh, I see two new questions now. But yeah, Dave and uh, Aaron Lee has answered all of the questions that came in earlier. And uh, we just have two questions now uh, in there. And how many French immersion uh, kindergarten registrants have these schools had historically? So in the past, um, how many registered children do we have had? Um, so I guess in the past years, somebody is asking about the tendency. You know, the, yeah, the, okay. I mean, I can, start, I can try to answer that. It's, it's, it, I know it's fluctuated. Last year, we're actually opening more spots this year than last year to begin with. We have, there, there's four classes at West and there's uh, one class at, um, at Selkirk. Uh, so historically, that's how it started um, with those are so uh, five classes in total. Uh, sometimes when when the numbers have outstripped uh, the places, there has been the minister has the authority to to kind of step in and try to create another class and they and she has done that in past years, uh, particularly maybe at Selkirk, but we did open another class at West last year. Um, it all kind of depends on the capacity of the school, um, but that's yet to be seen. But at this point with the, the 84 students, um, that's, um, that's our starting point. And, 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 we, and we never know, you never know year to year, the numbers will fluctuate and we can't even really predict. We won't really know until uh, the registration date closes what numbers we're looking at. If, if the numbers are under 84, then everybody can get slotted in to their place. If the numbers are ab above that, then that's when we have to look at, we turn to the, the lottery system. Thanks. Thank you, Gordon. Um, and then we have a question. This would be uh, for Tamara, I would say. Um, somebody's asking about what type of French is taught mostly at uh, Selkirk and Whitehorse Elementary? Is it kind of French from France or more Canadian French? Uh, French Canadian. Um, we do have, uh, yeah, it's, it's predominantly French Canadian. Um, 
I think it, it you would have a little bit of a flair as if we did have a uh, teacher that um, was from France and was coming in. Um, but most of our schools, and I can speak for Sharon, uh, we have uh, quite a plethora of different teachers. We have teachers that um, actually were graduates of uh, FH College uh, with the French Immersion Program that are now back teaching in our schools. Um, I have, uh, I think Sharon might have two. I have uh, one teacher on my staff, so it's great to see that they're staying home and, and they've continued with their French. Uh, we do have a, a lot of colleagues that come from Quebec as well. Um, and uh, and have decided as we have a large francophone community to to venture over here, but it is uh, French Canadian for sure. Thank you, uh, Tamara. Um, and then I have a couple of questions here about siblings. So, if uh, a kindergarten student is registered this year uh, and they have an older sibling in uh, one of the French immersion schools. Uh, will they be given priority or will they also go into the lottery um, if, if there is one? Uh, and then again, another question about um, what's the process for students with a sibling? Uh, and this one is particularly for Selkirk, but I believe it's the same process for both. So I don't know who wants to answer that one. <laughs> um, I, I can answer it. It's... Uh... If you have a sibling in the school, then then that student does get prior gets a priority placement. Yes, we, we try to. It's 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 about being uh, trying to you know accommodate um, and being being um, uh, uh, just just considering the family the family um, uh, situation and and the the commuting issue. It 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 makes sense to. So anyway, historically, and that goes for the other schools as well, and not only for the French immersion schools, but if you go look at the other schools in, in Whitehorse, um, if you do have somebody in, for example, and if it's in an elementary school, so if there's, if there's another uh, child in one of the grades up to grade seven, and then that, that particular student would get priority, get a priority placement in the school. It doesn't work if the school, if the student has left and gone on to high school and, and moved on to other other adventures in their lives. Uh, but it's, it's presently, if, if there is a sibling there, then that's those those students will get placed uh, right away. Thanks. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, so we have a question about um, what is the process for getting into French immersion at the grade one level? Um, is there a lottery again? Like, what would be the process if uh, if um, a parent would like to register their child for grade one French immersion? I can take this one, Gord, if you'd like. <laughs> so, um, for French immersion grade one, I, I can say that uh, at least last year we were able to accommodate everybody off the wait list. So, just to keep in mind that there is movement over the summer months too, where where spots do open up. Um, and uh, that's why that uh, the lottery is important to be able to go down. Um, if, if for any reason that you don't get a spot, uh, what we ask is that you contact uh, the school that you would like your child to be at. So for example, um, if, if it's at Selkirk, contact us and we have an active wait list uh, that we continue to update. And that way, if a spot does become available, uh, we were able to offer that uh, right away. And the same goes for Wes. I know that Sharon has had an active wait list as well. I think the big thing just to keep in mind is certain years we do have spots. And I know Gord was talking about how the minister has the decision to open up seats. Um, I, I think right now if for Whitehorse Elementary with 4Ks, um, they might not have any spots uh, coming into that grade one year because they have added that extra kindergarten class on, uh, where for me, uh, at sitting at 18 spots, I would be able to accommodate another four uh, students. So our capacity at kindergarten is a max of 18 students, uh, and then at a grade one level, it goes up to 22. Uh, so it's just to make sure that you contact the school to make sure uh, that your name is on that wait list. Thank you, Tamara. Um, I think that answers the question. And um, then there's a, a parent asking about if they register their child for French immersion and they do get in, 
Uh, but then, you know, before uh, school starts, they decide not to take that route um, before the child starts school. Uh, will that child automatically be registered in their area, in their catchment area school? Erin Lee can help out as well, but it's, 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 this is, wouldn't be, if there's place, yes. I mean, it's, it's, I can't say it, it's automatic um, because like, I don't know what the numbers are going to be and, 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 and classes can fill up. Um, with that being, it, and if that's the case where we ask parents to contact the department and we, we work with you to find the, the best option. Um, I, I can say on behalf of the people in the department, um, they, we try our best to place, uh, place children where, where the, the preference is. Um, but because you can only register one school at a time, and so when you're doing the, the registering, um, you can only select one school. So if, if you do find out that you were unsuccessful in one of the French immersion schools, then it would be, you would default to your, your, your catchment area schools. Um, not a guarantee you would get in. Um, I, I, there are cases where it, it doesn't happen. I, I would say in most of the cases, yes, I would, I would venture to say, um, but I, I, it's hard to say every time it's a sure thing. And if, if that school happened to be, had be, was full, um, the classes were full, then it, we, we ask you to contact the department and we have people here to help to help work out the best, uh, the best solution for you, best option for you. Yeah, so just to expand on that a little bit, um, once the lottery, if there is a lottery and the lottery is completed, parents um, will be notified one way or another of um, the outcome of that lottery. Once that is complete, if, if you are one of the unsuccessful applicants for the French immersion program, at that time, you can indicate what your school of preference would be thereafter because the attendance area is your immediate uh, school generally closest to you, but we also have the two Catholic schools that are options as well that uh, cover a divided uh, attendance area as well. So we wouldn't automatically assume that you would want one or the other. You would specify that application would then be transferred to the school of your second choice. And then that school would do the process uh, for their registration and um, would let you know what requirements might be would be expected um, once they received it. And if I if I can just pop in, I think too this is why um, sometimes uh, just to reiterate that's why we do have these different entry points. And I do really want to stress that you know the early immersion, yes, it's a great option. Um, but a big thing is, is really, uh, if your child does have a really good grasp of their maternal language or their first language, it really helps when acquiring a second language. Um, so that's something just to reflect on as well, um, because late immersion is a fantastic option. And I do know that uh, I think sometimes parents have a fear that because they're starting late, they're not able to catch up. And that's not what the data has showed us, in fact. Uh, we have a lot of students uh, that come in the late immersion program and uh, are the ones actually staying and retaining all the way to grade 12 and uh, graduating on par uh, with those that were in the early immersion. So, um, you know, if you're on the fence and uh, just to just to really think about that, that door is not closed and there is a great another entry later on still at the elementary level that is going to uh, be offered and available. That's a good point. Good point, Tamara. And, and I'd also put a plug in uh, for um, intensive French as well as uh, as with my experience at Christ the King School, um, that that has uh, proven to be really quite successful. And the Grade Five year academic year has shown to be um, just through research one of the best, one of the uh, a, a really excellent year to uh, to embark on learning a second language language in that fashion as well. So. There are lots of options and the First Nation option is exciting and holds lots of promises and that's going to continue to just grow and develop over the years with the First Nation School Board. Um, we're quite blessed here in, uh, in, in Whitehorse and in Yukon for the, just the plethora of, of programs that, uh, for kindergarten um, that 
and and elementary grades that that the options are uh, are are numerous. Thank you, Gordon, uh, Samara, and Aaron Lee. There were a few questions about that. If uh, if the child does not get into French immersion, what happens? Do they go into the catchment area school or not? And I think you all responded um, really well. So I think that we responded to those questions. There's a, a question here about, um, does the First Nation school district allow for crossing catchment zones as in the same way the Catholic schools do? So I'm guessing they mean, yeah, uh, being able to get into a First Nation school district if you're not into in the same catchment zone, I, I believe that's right. what that meant. Okay, that's that's a really good question, and I, I did just got a a, a recent uh, uh, kind of understanding, and and I mean, I guess keeping in mind that that the the board hasn't formed yet, the First Nation board, they, they don't, the school board actually hasn't, they don't have the membership yet, and it's kind of a, a you know, it's going to be developing over the years, but at this point, um, what the agreement is um, for the for the First Nation schools that if you live in Riverdale, you can choose from one of the following, so it, for, for the year coming up, so you get, like I said, you had Selkirk, there's Gray Mountain Primary, there's Whitehorse Elementary, or this Christ the King Elementary School. So those are the Riverdale options. And if you live in the in the Tikini area, you can choose from one from Elijah Smith, uh, Tikini Elementary, uh, Whitehorse Elementary, and Holy Family Elementary Schools. So those those are the options. You have all those four options in, in each each of your area. Um, but I do understand your question, and, and can people can people cry? and uh, those are probably going to be conversations uh, down the road. But at this early stage of uh, the inception of of the of this of the board, uh, the agreement is just going to keep it sort of like status quo, and 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 let's let's just see how how things evolve from here. Thanks. Yes, thank you, Gordon. That is uh, quite new to us too. <laughs> so, um, then there are a few questions about uh, what happens if you want to request to have your child attend a school outside your catchment area. What is the defined process for this application? Uh, for this, uh, is there an application to fill out? Who does it have to be sent to? Is there a deadline? Uh, do they need to contact the school directly with that request? Or where does that request go? So what is the process for asking to attend a school outside the catchment area? Okay. Um, the request goes to the superintendent. Um, it, it is something that, um, um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a process that, is looked upon that it's it will be approved in, but only in really unique circumstances so with the busing and with the and with and i think there is some work right now in sort of redefining catchment areas and we're gonna have to think that through with 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 this the first nation school board um things are 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 evolving in the city and, and it um so the out of area is is permitted only when there's uh, unique circumstances for the the student. And in, in, in other words, the student is is experiencing um, their for for whatever personal medical uh, uh, kind of reasons um, where th there is um, there's an urgency. Uh, to remove the child from the from that 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 catchment area, the catchment area schools, um, it 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 has happened. It can happen, but it's um, it's a process that goes through the superintendent, and they have to look. And there's a, a number of conditions that must be sort of uh, in place and met for that that movement to happen. It, it can happen. It does happen, uh, but it's not it's not. Like a, it's not a, 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 a rubber stamp kind of a request. It needs there's a, some stringent criteria as to why a student would need to go 
uh, an outer area school. And then of course there's there's the trans there's no transport the busing becomes problematic because you, the student wouldn't be eligible for the busing. So there's a there's a combination of factors that need to be considered. But in a nutshell, it can be done. Request goes to the superintendent, and and uh, uh, there needs to be a really strong argument made as to why um, that that out of area um, request is 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 put in play. Thanks. Thank you, Gordon. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a question about uh, so schools that are now under the uh, Yukon First Nation School Board. Um, for example, here, somebody asking about Takini Elementary, if that is their attachment school, will they be guaranteed a spot? That's a good question. I, I'm a, I don't, we, we, we don't know what the, the, like, we don't know what the interest is going to be for, the, the, there could be a, yeah, we don't, we don't, I guess we don't know. I think Takini historically has, has not filled up right away. Um, I think it's, it's taken some time. As, as a lot of schools, they don't fill up right away um, with the fact that it's now a, a First Nation, part of the First Nation School Board. Um, maybe that'll change, that, that we don't, I guess I can't really answer the question because we'd, we'll have to, it's kind of a wait and see. This is, we're gonna be going through some, uh, some growing pains and, and, uh, and just learning, you know, one step at a time. So that's probably not a great answer, but I, I just kind of speculating. I... Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> um, yeah, I would assume so as well, but yeah, we'll see. We're right in the middle of uh, planning for all that, right? <laughs> so somebody is asking about lunch programs. Are there any lunch programs at in kindergarten when schools that offer kindergarten, I guess? Very general uh, question about lunch programs. Okay. Well, I know I'm, I'm working right now at, uh, at, at Jack Holland School and they have lunch programs for their students. And I think maybe most of the schools now with the directorate is providing lunch programs. I know even at Christ the King, I think I said every, can somebody help me with this? Is it offered yeah. at every school? I, I can pipe up for uh, Christ the King. Um, it is a, um, a program that you have to sign up for. Uh, it's not provided by the school. It is su supplied externally to the school and the students. Um, so it's not a general program that's run by the school. So whether it continues or not, it, it's difficult to say. Tamara? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, being the principal, um, uh, right now it is uh, it, it's funded so the lunch program is not that every student gets a, a hot lunch. Uh, the lunch program is running for uh, students that are in need or who have forgotten their lunch. Uh, there is a uh, opt-in or opt-out um, as well. So right now it is through Yukon First Nation Education Directorate um, through um, funding by Jordan's principal. Uh, is it going to continue next year? I do not know. However, each school does uh, have funding uh, through Food for Learning to be able to um, uh, buy things for students that have uh, perhaps uh, forgotten a lunch at home. Uh, we do have um, families that are in more difficult times that we're able to provide that to students so that that's not a worry that they're able to, uh, to have a balanced meal at school. Um, but uh, for next year, for future, how that might look, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, there is a question about um, um, children who live part time with their uh, with both you know with one parent and part time with the other parent, um, and you know one parent lives on one side of town and the other one lives on the other side of town. Uh, they're asking um, in that situation, would they would it make sense to have their child attend a school that is between the two catchments? of those two addresses like would that be an option or how does that usually work best Erin Lee must have a thought on this 
Uh, okay, so yeah, that's definitely an option. Um, generally, the student would need to fall into one or the other catchment. I don't think aside from, uh, for an example, the French immersion schools or the Catholic schools, um, you, you wouldn't necessarily attend one that's outside of both your catchment areas. That would be a special permission that you would have to get from your superintendent. Generally, it's within at least one of the catchment areas. So the Catholic schools, it's, you know, Whitehurst is divided into two. So that's an option. And the French immersions uh, don't have catchment area. So that is also an option. Thank you, Erin Lee. Um, <clears throat> So I know we talked about the whole uh, process for entering grade one French immersion, um, but uh, there is a parent who would like just a little clarification about that. Uh, so, you know, for grade one entry um, for French immersion, is it first come first serve then? And uh, if so, is the wait list held over from kindergarten? So if you've applied for the kindergarten French immersion, is your child going to be on that wait list? Um, assuming that the child does not get in through the lottery uh, for kindergarten is, is it, yeah, it, is the child going to be on that same wait list or is there a new wait list for, for grade one? There, the wait list isn't carried over from the kindergarten year. So what I can tell you is that throughout that kindergarten year, if we do have a child that moves uh, or switches programs, that's when uh, we have, we go to the department, access the wait list, uh, for example, if there was somebody that is on the wait list for Whitehorse Elementary, but there's no uh, active wait list uh, for Selkirk, we do say and contact that parent, would you like a spot at Selkirk for French Immersion and give them that choice as well. Uh, that wait list isn't continued. Uh, that is why you do have to contact that school um, uh, to get onto the grade one wait list. So yes, there is a new one. Uh, that is not held at the department, but is held at the school level. Thank you very much, Tamara. That, that clarifies it for sure. Um, somebody's asking about if kindergarten is a full day or a half day. I guess I can even answer that one. It's a full day. They go to school same time as everybody else uh, in the school. And they, you know, usually schools finish at around three, depending on the schools. But uh, yes, it's a, it's a regular primary elementary you know hours school right um and, and it, i would really oh sorry go ahead gordon i was just, just gonna add tag on and it's not mandatory exactly yes it's not <laughs> um so i would also really encourage anybody um who might have questions to go and check the answered questions because uh, I know that Dave and Aaron Lee have been diligently answering a lot of questions. There's 30 answered questions um, in, in writing in the uh, question and answer um, tab. So if you, I really encourage you to go and look at it if you'd like. Um, it might answer some of your questions as well. Um, so let's see. Uh, ooh, there's some new ones coming in. Uh, actually, there was one in the chat. And uh, it might have been answered already in the Q&A one, but there was another one in the chat that says, um, can I apply for Holy Family while resident in Riverdale as we are moving to Whistlebend in August? Yeah, that was already answered in the chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Dave. I wasn't sure if I had seen that. Um, <clears throat> all right. So how do kids get to after school programs? if they uh, need to get into any, to any after school programs. Um, I don't know who wants to answer that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with after school programs for kindergarten students, uh, like uh, referring like daycare programs. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, like after school I programs. Think that In our, I think in our experience, um, after school programs would be the responsibility of the parents. So it'd either be by bus um, arrangements, like if they're in your area where you live, or some of the daycare programs have a pickup uh, that they, they have available. Um, I think also the Boys and Girls Club 
uh, that I'm aware of had had a pickup as well. But it wouldn't be school, it, it wouldn't be a school transition or a school responsibility that they would transition the students to another program. I, I think that's maybe where the question was going, perhaps. Yeah, and from, from what I know as well, just working with um, the team that work with all the school buses, um, they don't, uh, a child will not automatically get a spot on the uh, school bus to get to an after school program. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the priority goes to children who go uh, to and from home to school kind of thing. So uh, it's not guaranteed you can ask um, the department if, uh, if there would be an available spot on a school bus for your child to get to their after school um, care a place or you know wherever they need to go but it's not guaranteed at all it has to be a special request for that uh, so it, it's more or less it, it is not more or less it is a parent's responsibility but some children do get a spot if it doesn't require an additional stop for the school bus if it's already on their route and if it the stop already exists then it's a possibility and yeah, I know with COVID times, we've had less spots on the school bus, but this year I know we kind of went back to normal for school buses. Um, so, okay, so Dave is already answering to that one, but Gord, you had already talked about that, that kindergarten is not mandatory. So somebody was asking if their child can go part-time to kindergarten, um, or uh, if they have to be there full time. I don't know if somebody wants to talk about that. I'll just in. Uh, my, yeah, my answer to that was because it's not obligatory. A, a parent could choose to send their child four days a week, as as was suggested. Uh, is that correct, Gordon Tamara? In your eyes? Um, I, yeah. I, if that if it's mutually that works with the family and the school, sure. Yeah, that can be done. All right. Um, well, I'm not seeing any new questions come in. There are, like I said, there are many questions answered in writing. There are 38 um, questions answered in writing by Dave and Aaron Lee. So I really recommend that you go and look at those answers if you had any questions. Uh, and please, I'm, we, we can still take some questions, I guess. Um, but yeah, that, that's it for now. So maybe I can wrap up by, by thanking everybody, uh, thanking people taking uh, taking a break from watching the Olympics and uh, and joining us uh, for this presentation. Um, it's a very exciting time. My my children are all grown up, but I do remember vaguely uh, them starting kindergarten, and it's a it's a it's a it's an exciting time and a start to a an educational kind of adventure. I think we're really lucky this year, uh, I think with the First Nation School Board uh, coming online uh, with all the different options for the Catholic schools, the French, uh, the French immersion and the French language programs and the regular schools. Uh, there's some really exciting options out there for parents and we're, uh, we're um, I'm optimistic that it's that, uh, that uh, Almost the majority of people will will be uh, looking back in a year and and uh, be really pleased with uh, the 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 programming for that the the child is being registered in. I want to thank my team here. Uh, what a key group you are! So thanks to, to Tamara and thanks to Dave and Aaron Lee and Maria. I uh, couldn't do this without you as well. So thank you. Uh, uh, thanks uh, thanks to the Power uh, Corporation people. So that we have power in parts of the city and that those of you could join us and uh, thank you for your time and, and your questions and, and, uh, and visit the site. Um, registration starts on Valentine's day at 9 AM. Please be cognizant of the time and, uh, and uh, set your, set your alarms for that day. So maybe that's it. So I'll say thanks and we'll, I'll close the meeting. Um, any few, any, if there are some, there are some information again on the yukon.ca. If you do have further questions or need further supports, uh, there are contact information and there's numbers there that you can reach out to and we're, uh, we're here to help you. 
So thank you and uh, good night, everybody. Thanks again. <laughs>